Speaking now, we're going to have our, our brother, uh, Pastor J. David, David Hollywood from Cedarville, Illinois. He's going to be speaking from Jeremiah 23, 28, Jude 1, 8 through 25, preaching or dreaming. 25-minute message, and we appreciate the brother Hollywood's coming from Illinois. We were uh, hosted by their church several years back, and we appreciate his kindness. Go ahead, brother uh, Hollywood as the Lord leads. Thank you, Dr. Wade. I think that uh, in terms of the message that we intend to present, that uh, Brother Reno gave a wonderful example of some dreaming. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that's precisely the issue that we have at hand and want to bring to bear. Had opportunity yesterday to pick up the Indianapolis News. For those of you who did not, underneath the headmast there, we read from 2 Corinthians 3.17, I like that, isn't that a good idea? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Authorized version. <laughs> Interesting that these people can get it right, isn't it? Certainly thankful of the opportunity we have of being here and uh, uh, what a joy it is every year, the kind hospitality of uh, Dr. Dennis and the college, and uh, how thankful how thankful we are. I noticed something else in this paper too that maybe goes to the issue of dreaming. Uh, down in the area of Quips, and you cannot well see this, but there is a man of the military, and the issue is military issue. And uh, here I see that there are some earplugs and some blinders, and there's also a gag, and they have earplugs in case somebody asks blinders so a soldier cannot pursue and a gag to keep a soldier from telling. Now, in issues of the government and the responsibility for the authority that ought to be implicit there too, isn't it strange that we have come to such a day that men have to, by these devices, explain their dreams? And what we have here is an accommodation to what society is rather than a straightforward, absolutistic, dogmatic expression of how it ought to be. And the issue with which this society is occupied is precisely the same. God has spoken. But men, in their attempt to justify themselves, have attempted to bend the word of God to justify where they're at. Exactly. Right. Right. And that's the problem we have and why the President of the United States has to come up with such a policy of don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue. Yes. Absolute foolishness to yes. anyone yes. with half a brain. That's right. That's right. 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 But the travesty and the tragedy of these ki this kind of operation is so much the worse where the Word of God is concerned because there we are dealing with eternal issues in the souls of men. Right, right. Sad, sad circumstance right. in the day in which we live. That's right. Let's look, to the word of, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, how we thank thee for the great and grand opportunity of being in this army. We ask our Father that we make the most of the opportunity and be what we ought to be for the sake and the glory of the lovely Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you turn with me to the Word of God, to Second Timothy? <clears throat> like to read a number of passages there, beginning in chapter 4. This is not the announced text, but we'll go to that. 2 Timothy chapter 4, then several verses from chapter 3, several verses from chapter 2, beginning with verse 2 of chapter 4. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. I look at verse 10, for Demas hath forsaken me. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. 
I know this only Luke is with me. Praise God. Chapter 3, verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that were of godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Over to chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then verses 24 through 26, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, for adventure, will give them repentance, to the acknowledging the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Now, I say every year, you may get tired of it, this book is God's book. It is the real world. This is the real world. What God says is, I heard that this morning again, I heard it all the time I'm growing up, what God says is so Will it seem so or no? God said it. We say, I believe it. And that's true. That settles it. I believe on Him. Now, whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter whether you believe it. That's right. But for heaven, it matters whether you believe on Him. Yes, that's right. And uh, what we believe, uh, Bugs Bunny, I. I like that. Uh, it's an old baseball nut when I was a kid, you know. Uh, I like that John 1-1 one, one in the big inning. <laughs> but in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And we come to some understanding of what it is that we need to believe, and whom it is that we, we need to believe. In this, uh, in this wonderful book, when we have Jesus Christ in black and white. This is the hard copy. This is the literal Christ. And those of us who truly believe this book, who truly believe this book, believe on him. We understand that the devils believe and tremble. We also understand the quality of, of their belief. We chose the scripture, Jeremiah, in their chapter 23. The verse is 28. I remember when I was a child and my mother gave it to me three or four years ago, I'd written a little, uh, remember that? Called David's Dreams of Dreams. <laughs> and uh, praise God, none of those come to be fulfilled. But here we have, uh, here we have some dreams. I remember a song, uh, Dream a Little Dream. I, uh, I don't think that's as good as Think a Little Think, but here we have the dreams. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Dreams. A lot of problem involved with dreams. Brother Reno pointed out some of those to us. Men have dreamed about things that are superficial or beyond the scope of those things that truly matter. Some of them we have thought to be very important. Of course, Martin Luther King, you know, he had a dream. He was concerned about, you know, some things that were on the outside. He was concerned about the black and the white. What concerned a Baptist minister, was he not, supposedly? Was he concerned about the blackness of men's hearts? Was he concerned with a dream that really didn't matter in terms of preaching the word of God? 
the difficulties in this country that we have with race, with all of the questions of ethics, <laughs> the stupid military issue, how many of those issues are all determined on the absolutes of the Word of God would remove us from the area of, of the accommodation and from the area of the dream? For, for too few, when I became a man, I put away childish things. And we find a, tro a, a total preoccupation with things that are not important in the day in which we live. I go to the meat of what I intend to say in the book of Jude, if you go with me there. The dreams with which we deal are oftentimes things about which people represent that, that they have thought. And the thinking comes to be a very important moment in the day in which we live. I looked at this passage beginning with verse 8 and through verse 25 in t terms of two issues, preaching and dreaming. The first part of the passage through verse 16 deals almost exclusively with dreaming, and then we have a little preaching in verse 17, and then through the end of verse 19 we have some more of the dreaming issues, and then all of the preaching in addition to what we have in verse 17 is picked up in verse 20 through verse 25. I'm looking at this in terms of a couple of, of acrostics. This might come to be of value to you, it has to me. And so I'm thinking of the issue of dreaming and how you spell it in the first word, and you know how you make an acrostic. And maybe you might think of that a little bit as we, as we read it through, beginning with verse 8. All, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignitaries. Well, if you're talking about dreaming, you've got dreamers defiling flesh, despising dominion. Interesting. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally is brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they've gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and per perished in the gainsaying of Kor. That's the G of the last letter of the word dreaming, if you're interested. For those are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, forming out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, Esau, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds that they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and if some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Dreaming is oft times the expression of some thinking. 
that men have done. Sometimes it's very minimal thinking. Many times in the era in which we live, we could categorize it as being either possibility thinking or positive thinking. If it's positive thinking, or so it's represented to be, maybe it has to do with a fellow named Norman Vincent Peale, who, and we remember guidepost, do we not? I like to spell that guidepost, you know, it's the G-U-I-D-E, and it's really where he's concerned, it's the I-D-Post. It's a dream of his. Ever so often, rather than what we have in the absolutes of the Word of God, it's Mr. Norman Vincent Peale's perspective. It's his dream that we get in the guidepost. What a tragedy. What a tragedy that we live in an era when men are in fact, in fact, demonstrating the veracity and the truth of the challenge issued forth in that 28th verse of the 23rd chapter of the book of Jeremiah and everywhere we go they are telling their dreams and they are publishing them and they're selling them as if and they are bearing the namesake of the word of God and they are no more than the dreams of men I thought as one of the men represented the case of the Bibles being printed in China. There was again a good demonstration there of the dreams that men sometimes have. All of those Bibles printed in China, all of them for export, none to be used by people who there desperately need them, needing them. And I think of Bibles who in very, very recent years were printed within the Soviet Union. And on the frontage page there is a dedication there inscribed and, what, and the dedication was to the Lord Jesus Christ, who was represented there as being the greatest communist of all time. A dream of men. How many dreams, how many perversions do we have to deal with? And the difficulty, and it's our difficulty because we're the emissaries, we're the ones who are on assignment, and it is our failure that is well seen. There is so much chaff. And the reason there is so much chaff is today, in terms of distributing the product, there is too little wheat. What is the wheat to the chaff? And it may be that the preaching, dreaming issue is an expression of what in fact is said to be the watershed of our era with respect to the Word of God. I think it goes a bit beyond that. I think unless you consider within the realm of the Word of God being the watershed of our age, the fact that it is our failure and the failure of Christians at large to be obedient, and that's the key, to be obedient to that word. The difficulty comes down in that as we look at what has happened through the mechanizations of men such as Westcott and Hort, what we fail so often to recognize is what those men were doing was affecting an accommodation that would justify their behavior, their practice, and their belief, and they, as we started today, were in fact bending the Word of God to make the Word of God accommodate and to justify what they were. What they were doing was taking the dream that they had, and taking the Word of God and sifting it and sorting it and cutting it and reworking it, accommodating the Word of God to their practice and their beliefs. It was chaff at large. And the only ability that you and I have to combat that is by the implementation of the only weapon that we have that is effective. It's the wheat. It's this book. It's this book in purity. And we have allowed in our educational institutions, we have allowed in mission agencies, we have allowed in terms of paragroup 
parachurch group works everywhere sure. to enunciate their dreams and we go blindly by never, never making the cause mm -hmm. the issue of the wheat. Mm -hmm demonstrative and dogmatic and absolute yeah. and we wrap our arms around these fellows and we act like they are our friends yeah. and we're proud to be their friends I am not proud to be a friend of a man who is a heretic right. I'm sorry I won't shake hands with him right. I just won't do it maybe I've gotten cynical mm. I don't know but I used to have a much wider circle of friends mm. But I just don't have time for it. No, I just right. don't have time for it. Right. We're in a battle and we're in a warfare and we have to advance yeah. it in terms of the real issues of success and failure. Yeah. Right. This is the weapon. If we allow the accommodations of the evil and the dreams that have pervaded Christianity at large to make the case for the day, then we've lost it all. And we will be as bad in our testimony, in our circles, in our churches, in our fellowships. We will be as disrepute as are those who in the military of the United States advance such a cause as don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue. Mm -hmm. In fact, think about it. Think about it. Are we ourselves to a certain extent out of civility and nicety and gentlemanship? Are we accommodating ourselves to dreams that are evil? Yes. One of the reasons we come here every year is to make sure we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Charge our batteries. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a blessing it is. My family couldn't come this year. It is, for us, one of the events of the year. It's something that we look forward to. It's something that we really want to do. We just weren't able to do it. How much time do I have? About three minutes. About three minutes. Okay, I've got time to do this, and I want to do it. The question came in Old Testament times. It was Elijah. Don't you love Elijah? Yeah. And uh, it was Ahab. And Ahab said to Elijah, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? <laughs> yeah. I have a little understanding. I trust you do too in the world of your own experience. What it's like to be Elijah. We're on the battle line. These are difficult days. We look back to times and other men who stood the test. Well, oh, might the Lord give us grace to be the kind of men we need to be, Amen. the kind of women we need to be in these days. Great heritage. I think of John the Baptist. John Huss Baptist, you heard him? And Paul the Baptist. How about Martin Luther Baptist? That won't work, will it? No. It doesn't work Martin Luther King Baptist either, so. No, no. But I like Roger Williams uh, Baptist, and if I was down here in, uh, down in uh, Louisville, there's a Wayne Adams Baptist down there. Yeah. Praise God for it. Yeah. Kentucky Bunyans. Boy, we were in his church, weren't we? Right. Yeah. Wayne Lowry Baptist. I think of Paul Cates Baptist. we got Greg Dixon Baptist. You ought to be here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. friend of mine, Don Adams Baptist, out in, up in Horicon, Minnesota. Went through the same ordeal as we have. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Delbert Rogers, another one in Delbert Rogers, across the Wisconsin. Uh, Pat Kaplan, right now in Portage, Wisconsin. The dreams of men. That's what it is. It's the dreams of men. Right now. 
and some of the rest of you, and I understand it well. And I sympathize. Yes. But men, women, we've got to stand. Right. We need to rebuke the dreams of those who would disparage and destroy this book. Right. Because the best weapon we have for the king is the king's book. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Let's use it. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you very much.